Welcome in. It is day 265, and you're speaking to the Meeples Champion. And today we're going over another game from this past weekend's big all-day game, game day put, put together. This, I, I went through a lot of games. I probably played about 10 different games, and I think seven of them were brand new for me. So it was a, it was a day that when I had the invite go out to everybody, I told them I would like it if I could play new games. So instead of me suggesting games, you guys bring the games, and I'm going to pick the ones I haven't played before. So a few people had requests, and I said, sure, I'll play a few games that I played before. No problem. But thankfully, everybody was pretty happy with the idea of, oh, he's not picking a game. He's letting us pick the games. He's just picking from our, our choices the ones he's never played. So I could review. And thankfully, I got a bunch of them in, and I've been able to just have a week, basically, of just reviewing these games. So today's game is a game that I played at two-player. This was a game that was really easy. We played two back-to-back -back games, and I was shocked at how simple it was, and yet at the same time, it's it's one that it's it feels like there's just such a level of having to understand when it comes to quick thought. The game is called The City. Now, the idea of the game is, is that you're all going to start with seven cards and when you start the game out you're going to basically look at your hands and you each have to pick one card put it face down when both people and if you're playing with three or four or five everybody puts the card face down when everybody's done so you flip your card up and in the top left corner it's going to show the cost of the card that cost is paid for by discarding cards from your hand so you'll grab so many cards You'll put them face down into the discard pile. Nobody knows what you got rid of, so you don't give people clues as to what they can get. And then after you've done that, you look at the bottom of the card. You'll have multiple things that can be down there. One of them will be how many points you score. So everybody will score points right then, and you'll grab little tokens for it. Another one will show how many cards you draw. You draw those to your hand. Now there are cards in the center, one for each player, that if you cannot play a card from your hand, it's free. You choose that for your turn, you add it to your tableau, and all it's going to do is allow you to draw one card. So at the very least, if you go off and you build something huge first turn, but it gives you no cards, and now you're empty-handed, you can play that one for your next turn, and then at least draw a card, and now you start to draw your cards up. So you do this, you draw the cards into your hand, you get your points, next turn. It's cumulative. What that means is that now when you play your next card, when you go through everything again, you're going to go, okay, well, I played this card. So let's say we had seven, and I played a card, and I had to pay three. So I've got three cards left. It let me draw a card. So now I'm up to four cards. Now I play another card. It cost me two, so I've got one card left. Well, I drew a card for this the first time. I'm drawing again, and I'm drawing a new card for this one, so I'm back up to three. Plus, I got a point for this the first time, no points for the new card. You keep doing this. Now, the likelihood is it's going to take seven to eight rounds, likely. You could take longer. It's up to how you and your opponents are playing. But you're going to keep playing this until eventually the cumulative points that are adding to you, somebody hits 50, at least. Once anybody has hit 50 points or more, you don't draw the cards for that round. The game comes to an end immediately, and you count up and see how many points you have. So it's all about, well, how can I keep getting big points? Some of these cards are going to just be basic. Some of them are going to say, oh, well, if you have a card by this name, it's going to increase your points or increase your card draw by one or by two. Another one might say, you're getting a point for every symbol of this style. So now you're looking through your tableau and you're going, okay, well, this one says I get a point for every car. And I have every card I built has a car symbol. So I'm getting, you know, right now, three points every time for this. You might have ones that say that you get to score for your opponent. There are also some that say, you have to look out, you're going to lose points if you have a certain symbol in your city. So you might make one that's really good in points, but it says now don't make cars because cars are going to cost you two points every round. So you got to be paying attention to all these factors. But you keep doing it. Once you hit 50 points, you're done. Well, why don't we jump in? Let's talk about our seven categories and see where this game lands for us today. <laughs> A basic and yet a really beautiful box. Now, I've talked about this before. Size of box can sometimes change your opinion on an art. The art is beautiful here. There's no question there. But if this was a full-size box, would this art grab me? 
I think that would be more like a suburbia type feel to me. And I'm never really interested by that. But by shrinking the box in and getting it to be a smaller game, suddenly this style art grabs me more. Now this is a me thing. This is not necessarily any of you out there. This is not a normal thing. It's just, I'm not usually into city builders. So as you shrink the box, I know that means that this is gonna become more based on either cards or a very simple mechanic, at which point this game grabs me more. When you get bigger and bigger to like a suburbia, I don't like that setup. I don't want a huge board and all that stuff when it comes to that style game. It just doesn't attract me. But this game does. I like the art anyways, but with this size box, the art signifies to me what style game I'm possibly running into, and that's what makes me more interested. Inside the box, the art on the cards is fine. I wouldn't say it's bad art, but it's not attracting me. Nothing about that's going to make me interested if I see it at a convention. So I'm going to call that even. It's a wash on that, but it's a real big plus on the box. Thumbs up. Your components. It's a combination of cards and then all of the little cardboard pieces for your, your money or your points. It's perfectly fine. I think everything's good quality. Thumbs up. Your price. This is a game that's going to come in anywhere between $25 and $35. It's available. You know, it's it's from Eagle Griffin Games. It's going to be in two, maybe three board game stores out of five. You're not going to find this likely in a Barnes & Noble or in a Target, but you're going to find it online. And I think that this is worth its price. Thumbs up. Your difficulty. This is one I don't know if I'd recommend for kids. I think that that age, because of you having to really track everything, it's going to be a little tough and it could be a little frustrating for them. I do think beginners are going to have a little bit of the same issue. I don't think it's going to oust them in any way. I just think that for what this is, it is a lot of like having to track numbers and sometimes that can be a detractor to somebody newer into this game system. Sometimes it's going to be perfect. It's exactly what they want. They're like, oh, okay, I didn't want to have to worry about theme. I didn't have to worry about, you know, if I was if I was keeping up with all these weird options for worker placement or card deck building, like it's just one thing. But I find more people tend to be, I'm newer. I don't want to have to do a bunch of math. That's not fun for me. And this game is a little bit more mathematical and the cards aren't making the game feel huge in theme. It's not, it's not out of theme. It's just not huge in theme. So I think it detracts those two areas. I do think this is huge on, on the experienced player. The experienced player is going to love this. The experts, probably split. Half of them are going to say, oh, this is my style. I'm into it. Half of them are going to say, I don't like this at all. It's not fun for me. So you're getting half and half there, but you're really hitting those experienced players. That being said, if you're losing your beginners, if you're losing your kids, and if you're losing half your experts, that's just not enough for me for the difficulty to have grabbed enough people. I'm in the area that's going to like this game, but I think a lot of people won't be. It's got to be a thumbs down. Replayability. I played it back to back. It's not hard to learn. It's not too long. I think this is a game that can easily be played in groups, you know, year two, year three, year four. It's going to be something fun for those size groups. I do think the one thing for me that kind of felt like it hurt it a little bit was it was like we stopped maybe two rounds too early before I felt like I got my engine fully running. That can be annoying sometimes. Now, maybe I just haven't played enough to really see how to properly engine build quick enough. But that's also one where I feel like this is one of those games that variability of house rules could matter. This game says 50 points to the cutoff. My friend pointed out very easily, well, we could make it 100 or 150, but you might only get one extra round out, maybe two. And I was like, well, maybe that's enough. I think that when it comes to the replayability, it's there. And if the issue is you get frustrated because the game's ending too early, you can always house rule it. You can expand the number of points required to end the game. And that could allow you to have more replayability because you feel it's more of a big game and not a quick insert game. I have no problem with a house rule if it makes sense or if it just works for you and your friends. If that's something that makes it fun for you, house rule a game all you want. For me, that's one I would consider for this. So for I think overall, when it comes to that replayability, it's a thumbs up. Keys to victory. 
So the keys to victory are all about what are you focusing on? And what is your opponent focusing on? And what are your other opponents, if there's more than two of you, focusing on? You've got to be able to pay attention and target. When I was playing my first game, I was all about making the car symbols. I didn't pay attention to my opponent, and all of a sudden when I looked over, I realized, oh, well, they're doing a dominant attack on their symbols. In the second game, I was like, okay, I'm going to pay attention to what my opponent's doing this time. And I realized, you know, in the first game, I was all about the car symbols, and my opponent was about the fountains. In the second game, I started off trying to go in a direction, and I honestly forget what the symbol was, but it just so happened that what I was going after had fountains on it. So all of a sudden, when I drew a bunch of cards, and I saw a bunch of fountain cards, I went, all right, well, wait a minute. My opponent has all these cards. I've got some of these here. I have some extra fountain cards I could use, and... I've got a card that lets me score based on me and my opponent. So I started targeting those, and I changed up my game plan. The keys to victory are you can easily go for big point payout. You can easily go for a big amount of cards so that you have option later on. Or you can go on changing up what you're doing to be able to take advantage of you or your opponent's tableaus. So I think that keys to victory, big thumbs up. Unique. Is the game unique? I think that this game has some unique factors to it, but at the end of the day, I've played games like this before. I personally will play Progress Evolution of Technology over this game. That one does it in stages. It feels more like a game. I do admit when I play that game, I get a little bored by the time I get to the fourth age, but you can just pull an age out of that game. It's just like this for the if you want to be variable in, in your gameplay, if you want to have house rules, house rule it. I only want to play round one, round two, round three, round four. You have four options there. I only want to go to so many points. You have that option there. You can change it up to see how you want to make the length of game. But I find that game to be more fun, and it does what this does for me in a more interesting way. That being said, this game is a completely different theme, and it goes really quick. So a lot of people, I think, will enjoy this game. I like the game. But when it comes to uniqueness, it's got to be a thumbs down. I've seen it before. Overall, what do I think? I think it's a nice game. I think that if you're interested in it, I would try it first. I wouldn't rush into buying this one. I think it's going to be a little bit too much money to simply just buy the game and hope you like it. And this is the type of game that I think a lot of people aren't going to like. So I think you've got to, you know, give it a try first. And also don't be afraid. If you're a beginner, if you're a kid, and you want to give it a try, try it, and you may hate it. Then... Put it on a list and say, I'm going to come back to this game in like five years. Maybe it's more like a year or two years, but I would go with five. Because I think about when I truly started gaming, I don't think I would have liked this. And then I think about five years later and I go, I might have been ready for it then. Because if you're truly getting into gaming, in five years you're going to have gone through a lot of games. And then hopefully by that point, you'll be able to now try the game and say, okay, now I know I don't like it. Or, hey, do you know what? I hated it before, and now I don't hate it. I don't love it. I don't like it, but I don't even dislike it. It's just, I could play it, I just don't care. And that's a movement forward. So all of a sudden now, if that happens in five years, maybe a couple years later, you start to change up your variability of games, and you go, oh, now I'm starting to like this game. This is one that I think grows on you with time. So don't be afraid to try it. Don't be afraid to retry it. I just wouldn't rush out and buy it off this bat. Give it a try first. Well, it has been day 265. We've been speaking about the game, The City. And you've been speaking to The Meeple's Champion. Like, share, subscribe, and check down below in the description. I'll be adding in an Amazon link in case you want to get this game for your collection. Until next time, I'll talk to you tomorrow.